Hey, it's Scott Fox from ExpertWebsiteReviews.com. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk today about a website called HypnoHype. I'm going to turn it on in just a second here as part of the website review for my new friend, Asad Meki. And he's writing in it because he's a hypnotist with a very cool website, but he's looking to increase his bookings and increase the downloads of the MP3s he sells. Now, we're going to go look at it as part of the expert website review he ordered from me at ExpertWebsiteReviews.com. Here we go. I didn't turn it on right away because you'll see there's music and a whole bunch of animation that I want to discuss. Here we go. Very impressive stuff. And there he is, our man Assad. Hey Assad. <laughs> now isn't that a pretty sight? Very nice looking website. Absolutely. Very professional. You can tell that Assad is a professional entertainer. So nice work, Assad. But the reason I paused and I wanted to show all that stuff is because one of the primary questions you asked when you wrote in at expertwebsitereviews.com was this. You asked about the Flash, and so I wanted to make sure that we looked at the Flash together there. And also I wanted to point out that you had music playing, which I just had to mute so we could discuss this. Um, the short answer, Asad, to your first question, or your, it's your second question actually, is I know Flash is outdated. What code should I switch to? Do I use a Flash detection code or scrap Flash altogether? Asad, my answer is I would scrap the Flash. I'd scrap the Flash and the music. And that's why I wanted to show them to folks, because I can tell that that's a hard decision. You must have spent some money and some significant amount of creativity coming up with that. It's very attractive. I have to say, I normally tell people just to scrap that stuff because it's ugly. <laughs> but you did a very nice job. Very attractive stuff. Obviously, you're in show business. So looks good. Uh, and the music is subtle and nice as well. But the problem is, and here's why I'm suggesting you scrap it, that it interferes with search engines. So there's two paths that you can go down here I'm going to discuss in just a second. The flash interferes with search engine optimization. And the music, well, the music gives a very cool mood to your site. I like that. But it depends on who your target audience is, which is the points I want to discuss in a moment. But in most cases, if people are looking at this in the office, that music is going to come on and annoy them. <laughs> so in both cases, I think if you've invested the time and money for the flash animation and the audio, you could make them optional. But I wouldn't put them first. And here's why. Here's the two audience approaches I wanted to talk about. Like I said, both of those are cool. They add a lot of value. If somebody is coming and finding their site on your on their own, if your marketing online is successful, or offline for that matter, I know you're a cruise ship entertainer, for example, or if you've got good word of mouth from social media and other places, people are coming to the site anyway. They know about HypnoHype, and they come, and they're looking for some sizzle and maybe even some music then fine. Maybe it's okay to do this. The other path though that I want to talk about and which I think you're writing me for help with because your first question is how do I increase bookings? Um, well I think the easiest way to increase bookings is to get more traffic here and the same answer for you're selling more of your mp3 downloads and unfortunately the flash movie hurts your search engine optimization and that matters because if you can get good ranking in the search engines uh, or around your keywords, which we'll talk about in a minute, what are your best keywords, but they're probably something like hypnotist <laughs> um, or hypnosis show, something like that. Um, if people go to Google and look for that stuff, you're not going to rank as well because Google's going to have trouble reading your website because you've got this big flash entry point. So I think you could keep it if the flash entry point that is, keep it if you want to make it optional and say you want, want to see something cool, click here. Uh, it's joking, but you know, something like that, something optional. But when you put a, a site in Flash, and it looks kind of like your whole site is probably written in Flash here. Like, look, let's look at this. You see, I look, I'm, now I'm right clicking to look at the source code, and it says about Adobe Flash Player. That tells me that your whole site is about Flash. I mean, is written in Flash. Let's go to your about page and see if it's the same thing. Cool animation. Do you see how that, all that loaded? Very cool, but again, about Adobe Flash Player. So you must have paid somebody some nice money to build this. It's very attractive, and I think they did a nice job. It's honestly one of the better Flash sites I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of websites. But if you're looking to increase bookings and increase sales and, frankly, just increase traffic, I think you've got to play the search engine optimization game a bit. And that means probably throwing out the Flash, redoing the site in plain HTML, because search engines, well, they can't read this site. When they come in, they do just what I did. Well, they don't literally right-click like I did, but they're looking for this underlying code. And there's nothing here for them to see and read. And that's the problem. Let's, for example, go over here. Um, let me think. Let's go, well, let's go back. Let's go back to that site that we started with there, my uh, expert website review site. 
This site is written in simple HTML. And if you look, if I click, right click here, well, and there's me talking, which you don't need two of those at once, right? Hold on a second, sorry. There we go. Um, if you right click here, view selection source. And you can actually see right here, this is the underlying content of my page. This is the code, literally, the code from that section I just clicked on. There we go. There's the whole page. All right. So the whole page is there, line by line, everything I've written. And all of these words show up for Google. So their bot comes in and starts at the top, and it reads just like this, left, right, left, right, just like you do and I do as a human. And if your site is in Flash, you can't see all this stuff. And all these words are cues to Google as to what your site is about. And that means that they don't know quite where to rank it, and maybe it won't show up so well when people go looking for hypnosis or hypnotist or hypnosis show or whatever your keywords are. Okay, so unfortunately, I think the answer is get rid of the flash. As cool as this is, and I, like I said, it's one of the better ones I've ever seen, so I think it looks nice. But this skip intro, I think you should reverse it. The default should be to skip the intro. And the whole site itself, if you want search engine traffic so that you can get free traffic, free new visitors, then I think the site needs to be redone in HTML, which I know is a big job, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not recommending that lightly. But you asked. Okay, now let's talk a little more about specifics. Let's assume this site is in HTML, it is search engine readable, and what can you do to use it to redo it, to optimize it into something that will be attractive to both humans and search engines to maximize your traffic. Okay, so HypnoHype. I like the logo, I like the name, that's great. I think the music needs to be optional, like we said. Um, you, are, you don't have the word hypnosis uh, right at the top. HypnoHype is cool, but for search engine optimization, you would want the first couple lines to be about hypnosis and hypnotism, the specific words that are your keywords. Let's talk about that for a second. Keywords, you asked me in here, uh, one of our questions in, your, in our uh, questionnaire is, what keywords are you targeting? And you say, I need help here. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, here's some quick help. Uh, keywords for you are hypnosis, hypnotist, hypnosis show, uh, maybe cruise ship hypnotist, because I know you do cruise ships. Uh, I saw that over... Where did I see that in your bookings, I think, section? Is it it's a listing of the, some of the cruise lines you're on? Um, no, that wasn't it. Maybe it was latest news. There we go. Upcoming shows, right? This is great stuff. I mean, you're obviously a talented guy who gets a lot of bookings, but all, none of this is readable by a search engine. Or even if perhaps one of your former passengers says, you know, hey, I was on this cruise ship. I was on the... Uh, you know, or I was at this casino, or I was on the Carnival Fantasy of the Disney Magic, and there was this guy, and I can't remember his name, and they go searching for you. None of this, they might search Carnival Fantasy Hypnotist, and none of this is readable. I'm trying to click on it and highlight it, and none of it's visible to the search engines, okay? So, if your pages are in uh, simple plain text HTML, you can still have all these cool images. Frankly, I think you could mimic this layout very carefully. What you would lose is the way that the pages load, this kind of fade in, fade out, slide around. I mean, it looks really cool, and I, I, I get that. You're in show business, so um, you would lose that. But this static page, you could still mimic this layout pretty much with your photo here and then your body of text here. And the idea is that this bit here would be actual text, plain text. And each page should be structured around the keywords that are most important to that section. So on the home page, um, your first page, I don't know if what is hypnosis is your key thing, but when we go back, okay, you don't have a home page link here. That's interesting. Okay, well, that's a small error. You want one of these links up here to be home so people can get back where they started. It's very confusing to people from a usability point of view to get lost and not know where they were and try to get back. So one of these should be a home page to get you back here. And then each of these pages should be organized around the keywords and topics that you want to represent. So the home page would be something general like uh, hypnosis show or conference speaker or uh, event uh, event entertainer, you know, some combination of these sorts of concepts in a general sense. And then each of these sub pages would mimic those top level keywords and also the more specific ones. So if you're talking about the show itself, well then there you definitely would want to have hypnosis show is not just the show, but hypnosis show and mimic those keywords right up the top. It helps if they're in bigger fonts like this, not in Flash, but in HTML, because then Google will land on this page and will say, oh, here's the words hypnosis show. Not only are they on the page, but they're at the top of the page and they're in a big, bold font. That's three votes towards this page. Well, 
it must be about a hypnosis show, right? And that's how their machine reads this page. It doesn't really read. It's looking for patterns, and you have to give it these clues. This is a search engine optimization critique, basically, or review I'm giving you. And each of these pages, like Media Kit, well, that could be organized around hypnosis, uh, you know, conference entertainer, cruise ship entertainer. Uh, maybe even want to throw in some keywords like magician or, or I don't know, uh, band or you know whoever your competition is for bookings you know so that you get other uh, people maybe get dragged in here uh, when they're searching for something who is a competitor um, and each of these pages should reflect different sets of keywords keeping the master level of keywords but then also the specifics like booking or book an entertainer book a hypnotist things like that would be this page right so um, I hope that makes some sense and I hope that's helpful to you because I think it suggests a redo of the site but if you were to do that I would keep the cool graphics as much as you can. You obviously paid good money for them, but try to restructure them in a plain HTML environment. It will allow things to be a lot more readable. It will also, by the way, as far as last I heard, Flash like this isn't readable on iPads, right? Or in any Apple products, at least I think that's true. Um, you might want to double check that before spending money based on it. But the fact is that if you go with HTML, it will be more readable more readable. And if you're going to do a new site, by the way, let me quickly throw up my hand to suggest something. If you're going to do a new site, make sure it's mobile responsive. That's the buzzword, mobile responsive, which means that you want the site not to just look good here on a computer monitor like we're looking at here today where it looks so nice, but also on the small screens, right? On the little guys like this and the tablets. Where's my tablet? It was around here somewhere. But you know, that it's responsive so that the screen adjusts, or I should say the content adjusts to look good from this size to this size to this size to this size. That's called mobile responsive. So if you hire a new designer, make sure that it's mobile responsive, okay? All right, so what else can we do here now? The goals, so that's a long diatribe on both Flash and SEO, and I hope that's helpful to you in terms of conceptually how you do this stuff. And by the way, as a customer now of expertwebsitereviews.com, you've earned free passage to come and join us at clickmillionaires.com. That's my private coaching forum. And if you want to come over there and join us, um, we've got over a thousand people there that are talking about stuff like this all the time. And we can help you work through bit by bit the specifics of how you could upgrade your site to a more modern format and using the search engine optimization cues that I was just talking about. That's clickmillionaires.com. Come on in and when it asks you on the profile, normally you have to be a reader of one of my books. Well, maybe you are a reader of one of my books <laughs> since I know you signed up for this and, and uh, you signed up for one of my private coaching calls too. So either way, we'll get you in the forum. Just let us know how we can help you there, okay? Now, the other specifics that you talked about here are typical, um, the, uh, your typical target customers are talent bookers and you want them to book your show. And then secondarily, you want to increase your MP3 downloads. And I would add a third, you need to build a mailing list, okay? So let's look at this again from the top a little bit, talking more strategically now that we're past the flash and search engine optimization points. If you want people to book your show, buy your MP3 downloads, and then I'm adding build a mailing list, that needs to be reflected in the hierarchy of the things on your pages, okay? So, do you see any of those on this page? Hardly, okay? Um, we've got contact, booking up here, and then down here we've got book aside today. But there's almost nothing about your other goals. Oh, here's download, train your brain, and join the mailing list, okay? So, this is actually perfect. You've done this I, perfectly for me. These three things on the bottom are the most important things on the whole website. They've got to be up at the top, right? If you want people to book you, you need to make it more obvious that you're available for bookings. Now, this is painfully obvious to you, right? But none of this, what is hypnosis, the show, multimedia, events, media kit, facts about you, corporate sports, none of that really says, hey, I'm a guy that you can hire to come and entertain at your event. You need to make that more obvious. I think you've got too many menu items up here. You're, you're splitting people's focus. The focus should be learn more about me so you can book me and then maybe just book me <laughs> and then I'm not even clear what the download the train your brain thing is. I, I clicked around here earlier as you can tell but it's an mp3 product I guess you're selling. You can hypnotize yourself and, uh, and there should be a buy button here. Right, so you need you've got some great graphic talent here. Obviously, you need a button. People are looking for a button to click on. Right, this isn't underlined. It isn't anything. It doesn't even look like a link. Um, I would underline the links. I know that people designers hate that, but it tells people, hey, click me. Right. So okay, and that goes right to PayPal. Um, you haven't done a great job, I have to say, Assad, of of explaining what this is. Yeah, you need to sell this thing a lot better. I need a picture. 
of like a product looking thing, even just if it's an MP3, like a CD or something, although if you use a picture of a CD, you have to make sure you say this is not a physical product, it will not be shipped to you, it's a download only. But you need something like a little thingy, a widget that looks like a product, right? And you need a buy button, and you need to lay out the benefits to the customer of buying this thing. This is very vague, train your brain, an internal voyage into my mind, total success and goal attainment. I mean, this is super, but I, you got to be a little more specific to sell this thing, okay? This should be a product page. Take a look at Amazon.com or any other place that sells a lot of stuff online. It's going to make a promise. As you're doing, you've got the promise part, but you've got to lay out the benefits. What are the benefits to the customer? A, B, C, D, buy now, right? You're not really doing that here, but it's not hard to do, so you've got the pieces, and I need that buy now button and a picture of a thing, okay? That would help you a lot there. But that's clearly a secondary point for you. The real point for you is booking. So let's go back and talk about booking. You've got great examples. You've got um, videos and things like that. But this book aside today, this has got to be the focus of the whole website. Every page in here should have a box, a big box button widget sort of thing with some arrows or graphics. I mean, you've got a good graphic designer, so help have them figure it out. But you want pointing arrows or something red that attracts the eye that says, book me now, or more information for booking, right? And you got to hit that again and again and again. Um, and I would, as I said, I would narrow down all these, these, these uh, tabs. You've got too many things here. Like, why do we need all these photos of you? I mean, you're a nice looking guy, but, <laughs> you know, is that relevant? Everything that you have up here distracts people from booking you. Um, so you've got both all this stuff and a media kit. Um, I guess it's good to have a media kit. I mean, what's the idea here? That somebody downloads this and they use this to sell their boss so they'll book you? I mean, I would, I would lay out that path a little better. Um, corporate, here these are different kinds of events. I think you, you want to do a page that says, you know, how to book Assad for this, this, and this. And each of those can lead to this. I don't know that it needs to be the top line, well, maybe, but it, it's kind of up to you. But but there's just too many of these things up here, okay? And I want you to focus, trim that, trim the number of things in here in half, and it should be book Assad, learn more about hypnosis. Um, if you think you really need that, I'm not sure you need to make that case, but maybe. Um, and I would also go and take testimonials and sprinkle them everywhere. So every page should have a big book me and maybe a different one on every page, a testimonial or something like those cool ones you had at the beginning. Astounding, amazing, you know, especially they're nice if they're from individual people who've seen your show, but some of the ones you had on the home page there in the flash loading um, were from publications like, you know, the, the media outlets, you know, credible third parties are saying, wow, this guy's awesome. So I would sprinkle those around. Um, then you have these subsets here, goal attainment, corporate training, okay, like this kind of stuff. you got to pull this all out, and I, I, they shouldn't each be on a separate page. If corporate training is a thing, then corporate training should be a full thing, not just corporate. To me, that said, oh, this is about the corporation that Assad owns that he's running, and if that's one, if I want to know more about his business. No, you mean book me for corporate events, don't you? I, like, I don't see the word events in here nearly enough, and I think that's what you're after. You need to think about the key phrases not the way that you think about your business, but how do your customers search for you? That's really the bottom line for the keywords we talked about earlier and for how you want to reposition the site. You want every page to answer a question. Like who is this page targeting and what is it going to answer for them? What are they looking for? They went to Google, they asked a friend, maybe you're on Facebook, something like that, and they're looking for something. What are they looking for? You want to optimize each page to answer a specific, what they call a use case. Okay, this is a corporate planner. Uh, she's looking for someone to entertain at a company retreat. Okay, that's one thing for you. Another, per these call they call these personas in marketing. Another persona might be a cruise ship. Cruise line is looking for somebody for a Florida cruise. Okay, optimize around that. Right, pick each of your most likely personas and work around that. Now I mentioned Facebook there a minute ago, and that's something you don't seem to have on here anywhere. Um, it says connect with me on Twitter. Um, you know, join my Facebook book page, share this really cool video I have, how about a series of stuff on YouTube, I mean there's a lot of marketing angles it does, seems to me that you're not playing with yet that we could work on together again if you want to come over to clickmillionaires.com and talk to us some more on the forum. The last thing I want to talk about is the mailing list. Now, the mailing list is actually I think your most important thing because if anybody goes to the trouble of finding you, 
you should capture their email address so you can keep selling them until they finally book you or buy your MP3s. Um, this is, first of all, it's a pop-up. Uh, I would I would take this out and put it in the page. It should be on every page, Assad. If somebody goes to the trouble of finding you, you want to grab them. Second, I've never seen one that says, please remove me, right there. That is way too easy. You don't want to be throwing people off already. Get rid of this right away. No, no, no. That's a no-no. Uh, entering the email in twice, okay, maybe, but I don't know why you're doing that. You're just slowing them down. That's, that's not a bad thing from a techie point of view, but from a usability and conversion point of view, you want to make this as easy as possible. I would get rid of that. If it bounces, it bounces. But most times, people are going to try, right? Or you can send them through a double opt-in. I don't know what your process here is here after this, but they'll probably get a confirmation anyway. And then reset, get rid of that. This should be, yes, I want to be added to the HypnoHype mailing list. Here's my email address. Send. That's it, okay? And it should be on every page. And now here's the other thing. You should offer an incentive. How about a video of me doing some great tricks or an ebook of great tips? Or if your target market is really corporate event planners or cruise ships, how about a little ebook? Um, six great ways to, to spice up your event, you know, or something like that from your experience. Give them something or a discount on booking me or something. Give them an incentive. You want to build this list because you can use this list to sell your MP3s, to get more bookings later. Maybe you'll come up with a video series, something, et cetera, et cetera. You need to build that list yourself. And then every time that you go on the news, you know, you get interviewed on the Today Show or something, you can hit your list and say, hey, here's a clip of me on the Today Show. Aren't I great? You know, why don't you book me for your next event? And you can use that list again and again. That's an asset for you, Assad, that you need to pay more attention to building. Okay, so that's kind of a laundry list. I hope you don't feel like I was picking on you. You called me to ask for feedback, and there it is, a whole bunch of it. <laughs> I'm Scott Fox from ExpertWebsiteReviews.com. I appreciate you ordering this, Asad, if this is helpful to you, or, or you, if you're watching this later on YouTube or ExpertWebsiteReviews.com or anywhere else online, please share this with your friends and, you know, come on by and order one of these reviews for yourself. Of course, you're welcome at ClickMillionaires.com, and by the way, if people upgrade to the Masterminds level of ClickMillionaires, you can get one of these reviews of your website for free. Thanks for watching.